There is a foundational concept throughout Scripture. Paul, for instance, reminds us, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 And again, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Colossians 3.17 Consequently, each segment of our lives, whether education, profession, family, finance, recreation, relationships, civic duties, or research, is to be carried out within the framework of a comprehensive spiritual perspective. We begin with a concise definition. Research is purposeful and systematic inquiry that seeks to advance knowledge and understanding. While viewed historically in education almost exclusively as a function of higher education, research has been advocated more recently as relevant and necessary for students at all levels, particularly in terms of experiencing and understanding core elements of scientific inquiry. This view is particularly appropriate for Seventh-day Adventist education. Ellen White, who wrote prolifically on the topic of Adventist education, broadly stated, instead of confining their study to that which men have said or written, let students be directed to the sources of truth, to the vast fields opened for research in nature and Revelation. Education, page 17. As Christians, we take the Bible as the Word of God, inspired, trustworthy, and authoritative, a firm foundation for life and learning. While the Bible is not a textbook of research methodology, it does lay a foundation that can enable us to conduct research from a biblical frame of reference. Scripture not only provides examples of individuals who engaged in core activities of research, but it also describes key elements found in several types of research while highlighting various research principles. Throughout the Bible, various entities seem to be engaged in research. The Holy Spirit, for example, conducts in-depth inquiry. While the Spirit, as a member of the Godhead, certainly has knowledge of all things, Paul also writes, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. 1 Corinthians 2.10 While it may not be entirely clear why an omniscient being engages in investigation, perhaps the Holy Spirit's examination of all things has more to do with how to most effectively transmit aspects of this deep knowledge to others which is, in itself, an important phase of the research process. The Old Testament depicts individuals carrying out or advocating research activities. The patriarch Job stated, I was a father to the needy, and I investigated the case which I did not know. Job 29.16 Apparently, Job's ability to respond appropriately to the needs of others was based on inquiry, seeking to know and understand the facts of each case. As he considered the days of old, David declared, I meditate within my heart, and my spirit makes diligent search. Psalm 77 5 and 6. 
David seems to indicate that in the process of making an inquiry, he reviewed existing knowledge, including perhaps his own experience, in an endeavor to make sense of life situations. Influenced perhaps by his father, Solomon held inquiry in high regard, declaring that it is the glory of kings to search things out. Proverbs 25, 2. Furthermore, Solomon conducted his own research, stating, I turned my mind to understand, to investigate, to search out wisdom and the scheme of things. Ecclesiastes 7, 25. Perhaps one might expect that a prophet, having been given a direct conduit to divine truth, would not require the rigor of research. The Apostle Peter, however, observed, concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that is to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care. 1 Peter 1.10 The prophet Daniel is a case in point. When he received a vision indicating it will take 2,300 evenings and mornings, and then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated. Daniel was perplexed as to the meaning of this time period. I was appalled by the vision, he reported. It was beyond understanding. Daniel 8, 14 and 27. In an endeavor to resolve the mystery, Daniel searched historical documents. He then stated, I found from studying the writing of the prophets that the Lord had said to Jeremiah, Jerusalem will lie in ruins for 70 years. Daniel 9, 2. In the New Testament, the believers in Thessalonica listened to Paul and readily assented to what he taught. In Berea, however, Persons did not simply accept matters at face value, but tested Paul's teaching against the standard of existing scripture, a comparison of new data with existing knowledge. The author of Acts found this approach commendable, noting, now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Acts 17, 11. Christians, more broadly, are to participate in data gathering, in careful analysis, and in the formulation of sound conclusions. Examine everything Paul writes. Hold fast to that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 This harmonizes with a prime purpose of research. To discern what is appropriate and of value. To distinguish truth from error. In addition to cases of individuals engaged in research-related activities. The Bible documents various approaches to research, including aspects of historical, descriptive, quasi-experimental, and qualitative methodologies. In the biblical canon, the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts appear to have been the result of historical inquiry. This two-volume set was written by a physician, Luke, and presented to an individual addressed as Most Excellent Theophilus, likely a person occupying a prominent position in the society. In the introduction to the first volume, Luke observes that many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses. He then states, with this in mind, since I myself 
have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Notice that in these statements, Luke highlights the use of primary sources and the organized presentation of findings. While Solomon had wide-ranging interests, including plant life from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the wall, as well as animals and birds, reptiles and fish, 1 Kings 4.33. A portion of his 3,000 proverbs, as noted in verse 32, may have resulted from historical research. Ecclesiastes notes, Not only was the teacher wise, but also he imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. Ecclesiastes 12.9 Solomon's involvement in historical research is further supported by his statement, Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new. It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time. Ecclesiastes 1.10 In the New Testament, the writer of the book of Hebrews appears to have conducted a review of Old Testament history. In chapter 11, beginning with Abel, the author presents a multi-case analysis across the lives of 10 individuals, concluding that faith was a recurring theme in each person's experience. Hebrews 11, 39. The Bible also documents a descriptive approach to inquiry. Moses sent representatives of the 12 tribes to search the land of Canaan. He directed them, go up through the Negev and on into the hill country. See what the land is like. Numbers 13, verses 17 through 20. This statement could be viewed as defining the delimitations and the purpose of the study. Moses then instructed these individuals to find out whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? These aspects, the characteristics of the inhabitants, towns, land, and vegetations were the facets or variables of the study. Moses concluded by requesting those carrying out the study to gather a sample. Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. In all, a well-designed approach to descriptive research. Incidentally, as further illustrated in this case, data must also be interpreted. As evidenced, in the team report, various researchers can review the same data and yet reach quite different conclusions, depending on their assumptions and worldview. The book of Daniel presents what may be one of the earliest examples of a quasi-experimental approach to research, a single-factor post-test design. Confronted with the prospect of Nebuchadnezzar's dietary regime, Daniel and three fellow students at the Royal University of Babylon proposed a comparative study. First, they set out the research protocol. Please test your students for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water 
to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. Daniel chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. The independent variable was type of diet with two levels, simple food versus the royal food. Daniel and his three friends formed the treatment group, while the other young men were the control. The test was a question of difference. As a result of the study, there were to be findings and conclusions. The study, by the way, seems to have included a longitudinal component. Three years later, when the students rendered their comprehensive exam, Daniel and his three friends were found to be ten times wiser than the Magi of the realm, a group, incidentally, that included their instructors. In addition to examples of historical, descriptive, and quasi-experimental research, the Bible also presents instances of naturalistic inquiry. Luke, for example, became a participant observer in Paul's missionary journeys, reporting events that he experienced. Notice the transition to the first person beginning in Troas until Philippi, Acts 16, verses 10 through 40, and then several years later from Philippi onward to Rome, Acts 20, verse 6, through the end of the book. Cases of direct observation may be found in Peter and John's examination of the tomb where Jesus had been buried, John 20, in Gideon's observation of the wet and dry fleece, Judges 6, and Nehemiah's nocturnal inspection of the ruins of Jerusalem, through which he corroborated interview data, Nehemiah chapters 1 and 2. In his day, Jesus remarked that persons would make predictions based on qualitative observations of natural phenomena, but were not applying a similar process to the signs of the times. Matthew 16, 2-4 As we have noted, the Bereans triangulated what they heard with document analysis. This cross-check of data sources fits well with the biblical injunction that a matter is established with evidence from two or three witnesses. Even the witness of the apostles was based on the triangulation of what they had seen and what they had heard, as described in Acts 4.20. In addition to referencing various approaches, the Bible highlights core concepts within research. These include the following principles, among others. First, inquiry is linked to discovery. Jesus spoke of this relationship when he said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Matthew 7, verse 7. While a spirit of curiosity is a key trait in inquiry, the process of inquiry itself requires an investment of personal effort. Solomon remarked, If you seek wisdom as silver, and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will find the knowledge of God. Proverbs 2, verses 4 and 5. Second, research builds on prior knowledge. Bildad the Shuhite, for instance, advised, Ask the former generations. Find out what their fathers learned. Job 8, verse 8. In a similar line, Paul wrote, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. Romans 15, 4. A third principle. Research encounters limitations. There are matters that transcend the capacity of research. The book of Job asks, 
Can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? Job 11, verse 7. God himself reminds us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8-9. Part of the problem is that we see in a mirror dimly, and we know only in part. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. Beyond these limiting factors, however, there are simply matters that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has conceived. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Questions on which even the best designs may come up short. Fourth, research can inform decision-making and guide practice. When David needed to identify qualified personnel, a search was made in the records, and capable men among the Hebronites were found at Jazer in Gilead. David then placed these individuals in charge of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh for every matter pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. First Chronicles 26, verses 31 and 32. In another example, Moses warned that if upon entering Canaan, it was rumored that some of the Israelites had begun to worship pagan gods, research was to proceed action. Let a full search be made, and let questions be put with care. Deuteronomy 13, verses 14 and 15. Only if the report was found to be the case was action to be taken. Finally, it seems that research is a divine directive. Jesus stated that every disciple of the kingdom is to be like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Matthew 13, 52. While all that proceeds from the storehouse is of value, some of the treasure is to be fresh knowledge, perhaps as a result of research. Solomon also implies that research carries a divine endorsement. After stating, I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven, Solomon adds, This burdensome task God has given to the sons of men by which they may be exercised. Stated perhaps another way, God has given us the difficult assignment of research with the intent that we should actively engage in it. We have briefly examined some instances, approaches, and principles of research that we find in Scripture. The prophet Daniel, as he surveyed the broad scope of history, asserted that an increase in knowledge would be a defining characteristic of the time of the end, Daniel 12.4, suggesting a surge in research in the times in which we live. Given the role of research in contemporary society and in educational practice, linked with the perspective that all activities are to be carried out from a Christian frame of reference. An examination of research from the perspective of Scripture can serve as a firm foundation, enabling us to view and employ research as a valuable tool in discovering God's truth. Or to summarize the concept in the words of Ellen White, in order to understand the truth of God, 
there is need of deep research. As Christians, may we commit to engaging in each facet of our lives, including research, from a biblical perspective.